guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game playthrough. Today we'll be taking a look at Dragon Lords, the Battle of Darien by Wolf Lord Games. Grant over here is rocking the Wolf Lord Gang shirt. And we are going to be showing you the solo mode variant. We've played this game live and showed you a review of the two player mode, but there is additionally a solo player variant out as well. That's right. So we're actually going to be showing you how you're going to set up a computer player's deck as well as your own deck and then how the computer is going to kind of act when it is their turn. Now, generally the game plays very similarly to the two-player game, but with some exceptions, which Grant is going to kind of explain as we go down and show you what's on the table below. I'll go ahead and illustrate what's on here, and then how we set the decks, Grant will explain, as well as how the computer player works. So first of all, these are all the tokens in the game. There's damage, there's going to be shields, you're going to have things that bind with each other, you're going to have fire tokens and poison and all kinds of good stuff. There's also tokens that are going to allow you to show you that you're mounted or that you're in the air, as well as action tokens as well, which you can use on your characters. You're going to be going back and forth in this game. You choose a character, the computer player is going to choose a character, and after they all acted, then you're going to refresh and continue playing. Eventually, when somebody runs out of characters, they're going to lose. Or if you're playing this variant, there's actually another way I think that can happen. How's that work? Uh, if the computer wipes out all of your characters, if the computer goes through its deck six times, and if the computer defeats your leader. Okay, so if any of those things happen. But for us, we just need to defeat the all their army. All the computer players' army, so it's a little bit of a challenge. Uh, here you see there is one set of characters down here, which is the yeah, computer like players. No, that's ours. Okay, this will be ours. Like normal. So it's just set up just like normal. Yep. And now with the computer player is actually going to set up its own unique style. Yeah, right? you take all of the cards that are left over and you're going to set aside the armor and the summons. Summons might be used during the game, but they're going to be set aside. Magic and uh, the orders are going to be set aside. Then you shuffle all of the locations, the heroes, the units, and the dragons together in their own respective decks. And then you go ahead and flip those over after you're convinced they're shuffled. Yeah, okay. So we want to make sure we shuffle it beforehand. So now we're going to go flip over all these guys here. And uh, now we're going to begin the right, start with the dragons and flip over a dragon. All right, so we get first one here. That one is... The dragon is less than 20. You draw another dragon. Yeah, it is definitely less than 20. So we get another one there. That's that's a pretty pretty weak army right there. So that could be good for us. Now draw a, uh, a, draw a hero. So right now this is a good dragon. So all of the units are going to be good no matter what they are. Okay, so we're playing against a good army. Uh, yeah. Okay. So if, if any of these characters were evil, there's no conflict. They're all just good characters. Oh, wait, we don't want this one. We want this one here next, right? Uh, this yes. Guy. Yep. We got the elf lord. Okay, so he's going to be uh, equipped on the highest point dragon. Uh, uh, riding on the highest point dragon. Yep. And we're going to set these guys over here, right? Yep. Okay. And then? Then you're going to draw cards from the unit deck until you have over 35. And we're looking at the top right, left-hand yep. corner, right? So 9 and 5, that's going to be 14. Uh, then we got 6 more, which is going to be 20. 6 more is 26. And then 36. So there you go. That'll work. Putting that looks guys. like it might not be too bad for us. Yeah, it could, it could have been worse, for sure, right? Yeah, that could have been like a 25 after you flip the 9. All right, and then we're going to put this over, and that will actually be the, their army. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Now just clear out the rest of the cards, and then you have the Dragon Mandate deck. That gets <laughs> shuffled up. There's 15 of these in here. Oh, what about a location, too, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Flip over a location to you find one that benefits this. Rogue character. units get plus one gem when they're casting a rogue spell. Uh, Let me check. We got warrior. All we got is warriors, pretty much. All right, let's see the next one. The next one is a warrior gains plus one damage while attacking. Okay. Oh. That looks, that looks like it benefits it. Uh, that's, that's really powerful. Okay. Uh, yeah, this actually mimics that one. That one's humans get plus one damage while attacking, and I believe all of the units are humans. Yeah. Except for the leader. We got, is... we got a knight, the, the dragon, of course, and then we got the warriors over here. I think they're also all humans as well. Yep. Uh, undead. Undead commander. Uh, yeah, undead commander. And they're all warriors pretty much as well. These are actually my character. You see the resemblance? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you've shuffled up that deck. Now, who gets to go first? Uh, human player always goes first. Okay, so we're going to select a character, and yep. then we're going to take an action, basically. Yep, an action consists of two orders. Cool. Or, or other things like buying heal potions, using heal potions. Let's go ahead and move my dude. Go ahead. All right, so we'll take this wolf uh, clan infantry dude, and right, we will so, move him so from one space to the next. One action. Okay, and then we can take another action. Now, does he have a ranged? He doesn't have a range. So my other options are down here. We have either howl or we have wild dice. 
And Hal says reroll any number of attack die or add plus one damage to attack results. We can't really use that. Or reroll any number of attack die or remove one of your opponent's defense die, which we also can't yeah. use. So I think he's just going to stay, right? Yeah, that's probably probably what he's going to end up doing. I'm going to go ahead and put one of these on him to yep. signify that he's done. Yep. Okay, and after our turn, now the computer gets to go, right? Yep, so draw one of these cards, and you're going to perform, you're going to go from top to bottom, and you're going to try and perform two orders. Once so, you perform two orders, the card's done. So there, usually there's at least two orders, right? Okay, there's so usually like five orders on the card. This one's actually a dragon mandate. It says select the enemy unit with the highest attack die pool. And we're going to go ahead and look, and that's going to have... 10, I think so. I, no, think... I, I believe enemy unit refers to your characters, and player unit is. Oh, okay, that makes sense. An enemy unit. So in this case, it's gonna be the dragon, right? With, With the highest it. dice pool. Ooh, yeah, so... actually, that'd be the, that'd be this guy, the elf lord. So that's plus nine. Okay. Uh, this one's got 10. Oh, even stronger. Oof. Okay. All right. So, um, the enemy will perform an attack uh, on the player unit with the lowest armor rating. If the, uh, performing a range attack, can you perform a range attack? No. Alright. Enemy unit draws and plays an order card. The enemy unit may play an order card and is not limited to any of the restrictions. Okay. Alright, so... Draw a card from the order deck? Go ahead. <sighs> okay. Move up to two units, one zone, ending in the enemy starting kingdom. Ooh. Yeah, so, that, so they're going to move uh, towards the enemy starting kingdom. Now which one am I going to select? Usually the one's worse for the player, right? Go with the high... Well, this one says select highest die pool, so pick the two with the highest die pool moving forward. And this guy's already uh, attached to this guy here? Uh, yes. Are they flying as well? No, they don't start as flying. All right, so one of them is mounted. Which one is that? I believe it's the dragon one. This one right here? Yep. Okay. This means they're in, in, in air. Yep. Okay, and they both move then. All right, that was one dragon mandate. All right, so it's our turn now. And we also basically got to put one of these things... On the highest die pool character, right? Yep. Okay. Let's go ahead and move our next Wolf Lord infantry up. Yep. But this time we can actually do something, right? Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and attack. Now, this guy says that we're going to get eight die plus a red die. So we'll get this here, four and eight, and we're going to choose to attack something. Now, what do you think we should hit? Well, remember, the guy riding has bonuses to defense while he's riding. So he's a little more dangerous. So, so we should probably go with the Cursed Knight here. Him. Or you could hit the dragon. The dragon doesn't have bonuses for being ridden. And they're not, it's not in flight right now either, yep. so they're both on the ground. Now he's got a defense of five, right? And he needs to roll three ups. To save, yeah. Yeah, and he has a defense of five, and he needs to roll three ups. And their health is equal to the far left-hand corner, right? Yep. So, which one do you think we should go for? The Cursed Knight? Yeah, he's got less HP. All right, so I'm going to roll all these guys over here. Come on! So we got two fives, and then plus a damage. So then he's going to make a save, and he needs to make three ups. Yep. So, so this yeah. is going to convert into a die, yep. and he's going to need to make three three-up saves. He made two of them, which means he takes one damage. Yep. Nice. And uh, we'll take a damage token and put it on this guy. If he gets five more, he's done for, right? Yep. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and put an order token and signify that my Wolf Lord infantry has acted. All right. So the next dragon mandate, select the highest uh, value enemy unit. Hmm. That'd be this guy here, right? Yep. Okay. If there are no player dragon units in the same zone as the enemy, the enemy moves up to two zones to reach the nearest player dragon unit. Okay. He's moving over to the drag my our dragon, Galleon. All right. That was the first order. Yep. All right. If possible, perform a melee attack on the dragon unit. All right, so this dragon guy, he's got a total of eight die plus a red. So three, six, seven, eight plus a red. He needs to make five ups. And he got two of them, and he got one. So this will convert into a die. These will move aside. And then we're going to roll these die to save, and we need four ups. Four ups for our dragon. We got two of them, so we take a damage. Not too bad. Mm -hmm. now, do, now, do either of those characters have any bonuses for attacking or defending? Let's go ahead and check. So this one says it has plus two plate armor and minus two from siege attacks. Once a round, you may discard up two spell cards in exchange for health. Nope. Remember, there's a line right under the picture, typically. Yeah, yeah. I don't see anything that specifically okay. says that. And then this guy over here, he's a plus one to all dragon and knight units, but he's the lord, so he has, he's not acting. It's the dragon that's actually acting. So he's going to go ahead and get one of his little tokens there, right? Cool. All right, so he's acted, and now it is once again our turn. Yeah. What do you think we should do? Well, you could mount up on the dragon and then attack. That's a good idea. So let's go ahead and use this guy here, right? Yep. And we're going to mount up. That's one action, all right? Yep. And then we can attack with our... Uh, that one looks like it only has a melee attack. 
And they're not flying, so I can do that still, right? Yeah. All right, so that's going to give me 10 die, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and a red die. Anything special with this guy? He says plus 1 to dragons. So plus 1 damage to dragons and minus 1 crystal per attack. And actually, we get crystals start the game off. Oh, uh, right? yeah, 3, I believe. So each player is going to get these 3 crystals. Uh, the, the, the computer uses um, they, they just the stock. Need. Yeah, they don't care. All right. And while mounted, you cannot cast spells. Poison damage causes this unit to heal. Awesome. Cool. Okay, so uh, looks good. He's going to get a plus one damage to the dragon. So we're going to fight the dragon. Why not? Yep. And this one just says plus two damage to plate armor, minus two from siege attack. So no big deal. All right, so you're hitting the dragon? Yes, we are. Five ups, right? Yep. All right, so we got a couple of them. One, two, three. And then we get a plus one damage due to the character. Yep. And this is actually going to make us lose a crystal. Yeah, when the black sides roll up, you get uh, bad effects. In this uh, case, losing a gem. And then these are all no good. And we did that. So this player here is going to have to roll four. And he's going to check his die, which is going to be three ups. Oh, he saved all of them. Jeez. Yeah, this is a very, uh, actually, tough team. They're mm. very hardy. They got a lot of health, a lot of pluses. So we're going to go ahead and give this guy a mounted. Or give this guy a uh, action. Means he's done. And let's go ahead and do one more turn so you guys get a good idea of all the different cards that can come out of the deck. All right, let's see. Select the enemy unit that has suffered the most damage. Well, in that case, uh, there's not going to be anyone. If no enemy units have suffered damage, select the lowest value unit. The lowest value unit would probably be this guy here. He's five. Okay. If the enemy uh, has suffered damage, heal. They retreat up to one zone before heal. Okay, enemy unit draws and plays an order card. So this guy is going to be the one acting. He's going to draw and play an order card. Take two gems from the enemy horde. So he's stealing gems from us. All right. And a draw and cast a spell card. The enemy unit may cast any spell drawn is not limited. Wow. This would normally be two orders. Uh, order a warrior unit to perform an attack. This attack gains plus six dice and wounded. Once the attack resolves, the attacking warrior unit is destroyed. So we have a warrior unit, don't we? Um, but they're all back here, unfortunately. All the rest have been used. Um... Oh, no. Wouldn't he get to use this one because it's a spell? I think you're right. So I think he can. This is actually a warrior. And yeah, he can choose to order a warrior unit to perform an attack. So this guy is going to perform an attack. He's going to get plus six die to his attack. And and wounded. Wow. <sighs> okay, and then he's also going to get plus ten. Yep. Two, four, six, eight, and ten. And then one red. And he's going to hit. I guess we'll just hit one of these guys because yep. it doesn't really matter, right? And he needs four ups. Four ups. Typically, you're going to attack whoever is better for the... The computer the player. The computer player. All right, wow. This so is... you're going to always attack the weaker thing, the thing that's more damaged. But in this case, it's... That is a lot of potential hits. And we're going to move this one over and turn it over to this. Yep. Any specials? This one says plus one damage to melee, plus two damage from dragon attacks. Ooh, he doesn't like dragons. And this one's just plus two damage from uh, cleric attacks. Yeah. When a friendly undead unit is in your... Per no, no, nothing to worry about there. Okay, so these are all that we need to roll. We need four ups. Four ups on these. Oh, this is, this is going to be bad. He might lose. All right, so we're taking one, two, three, four damage. And these are all our four ups. So we're only taking four. We survive. He took, he took it like a man. That's right. That's how I do it. That is how I do it, quite literally. Yep. All right, four damage on this guy here, and this guy actually explodes. That was actually pretty worth it. Yeah, it was actually a good deal for us. Thanks, computer player. It's nice to know that you're, uh, you're, you're donating to the cause. But yeah, that's the basic idea of the game. You just keep going back and forth, and eventually after all of the units have these order tokens on them, then you're going to refresh the game. So everybody's going to be able to interact. Now, if, let's say, one side has uh, order cards, right? Uh, all others have orders on them, then this player will actually just keep going until he's used all of his orders, correct? Yeah, until all of his have uh, markers on them. So it can be very dangerous to lose your characters to begin with in this game, especially in a solo player, because he gets yeah. to draw cards. And you also want to try and create that advantage for yourself by uh, by eliminating the enemy units so you can take extra unfettered actions. And it also makes them not draw extra cards, because some yep. of these cards are very powerful. Let's go ahead and read a couple of them. I'll read one, you can read one. Oh, this is a Dragon Mandate. We'll read it. Oh, no, they're There's all Dragon, Dragon Sorry, they're all called Dragon Mandate. I keep thinking they have names or titles on them. This one says, select the highest value enemy unit, enemy rogue unit, roll the enemy rogue unit's at highest attack die pool, steal the amount of player gems equal to the roll, the roll, and if the rogue unit is unavailable, select the highest value instead, highest value unit instead. 
And then draw and cast a spell card. The enemy unit may cast any spells not limited. And the final thing is you can move one additional zone and perform the special action on the enemy unit's card. And oh. all these units have special actions. Like, we'll look at, let's look at a, one of these guys here. This is a Barbarian. This one says, Carnage, resolve an attack with no defense dice pool. Wow. So your enemy is not going to be able to use the defense. Very, very, very powerful. Yeah. All right, this one has uh, select enemy unit with the highest mana value. If there's a player unit in the same zone or one zone away, the enemy unit will cast and draw a spell. Then the next one is two orders. So if that doesn't happen, if there are no player units in the same zone or one away, the enemy unit moves one zone towards the player's nearest unit, then draws and casts a spell. Wow. Then there's a, a final one. If the enemy unit has taken any damage, they heal the amount of their uh, maximum healing value, which are listed on the card. So whenever you pop a potion, you heal that much. Which is interesting, like the dragons, they don't have a healing value, so you can't heal them with potions. And then you have some units that have like really low healing values and others that are much larger, so they can heal the full. So it wastes more of your resource depending on the ones. And then there's a bonus on that one. If the enemy unit has taken any damage, they heal the amount of their maximum healing value as well. And this is a free action, doesn't cost an order. Um, wow. So that's basically how the cards work. And there's a big stack of basically enemy orders. After it goes through an entire time, you reshuffle it. And if it goes through six times, then you lose as the player and the enemy wins. Yeah, you put a little mana token next to symbolize to the gem it's gone through. It, and then once it's gone through and there's six there, done. Yeah. Also, we didn't really use these, uh, but this one would give all of our warriors plus one damage. So just imagine that all of them got an additional damage. We have to defend additional ourselves. Additional die to roll. Yeah, and then on this side here, same it's thing. humans. It's the same thing. So kind of canceled each other out anyway. But just to let you know, that is part of it. And and of course, the, these spells and orders work the same way in the normal game for the yep, uh, player. Yep. So you, you draw three from each deck. For those of you who haven't actually played this game or know about like what's going on, you can check out our original playthrough um, from Facebook as well as you can check out our review of the base game. So because we kind of just want to talk to you guys about how the solo player mode works for this game. And, and, I think and, and when you look, you'll see they're pretty similar. Yeah, yeah, they're definitely very similar. You, you just use, utilize this deck and you kind of manipulate the board based on what the computer's best actions are, based on the cards, the, the orders that you can choose, and you're going to go along until you can do those orders. So <laughs> Sometimes you'll get lucky and they won't be able to do any of the things. So that's cool as well. But all right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you guys had some fun with Dragon Lords, Battle of Darien, and uh, Wolf Lord Games. Thank you so much. I hope you guys appreciate the little walkthrough. I will talk to you guys next time. <laughs>